All right, guys, it's Ben. I'm answering a question from Twisted Apparel. It's down here. And he's asking how I approach writing drum parts for an original song. So I've got a few pointers. Let's get into it. Number one, and this is the most fundamental one, is you've got to listen to what the bass is doing. The bass and the drums are the foundation of the song. And bass is kind of the bridge between the rhythm of the drums and the melody of the rest of the song. So you guys have got to be locked in. So really, if you're talking like traditionally, you're going to want your kick drum to follow the main accents on the bass. And then your snare, let's just say it just falls on a backbeat for now. And that's going to give you a pretty great foundation. So let's take the track Centered and One by Dorje, and let's look at the verse. Quite a simple groove, but the kick follows the bass, and then the hi-hats are just keeping nice and easy, and the, the snare is just on a backbeat. Also notice the accents on the hat are not just... It's... Which helps keep it moving along. So this is the groove from the verse, and the bass is going... ba ka ba 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 ka Ba, cat, ba, ba, ba. So, pretty simple, but it's really effective because it just locks into the bass. Just bang on. So number one is definitely listen to what the bass is doing. Now you can get a bit more intricate and start to displace the snare a little bit. That could make you kind of, you could jazz the groove up a bit. But as long as that bass drum is locking in with the bass, you're gonna be fine. So like I could play buh, 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 and I can mess around with the snare like this. and that would still be locked in with the groove. So number one, follow the bass. Number two is choose a subdivision that's appropriate. So on your leading hand, whether that's playing hats or ride or crash, choose a subdivision that's appropriate for the movement of that section. So for example, in that centered in one groove, I'd played it all as really tight sixteenths. To have a totally different feel, it would be this. It's different, it's cool, but it's not the same as And you could have that again and just be left with quarter notes and you'd have that. Again, a different feel, depends what's appropriate for the song, but for the verse, it felt right to play eighth notes. So one way you can play around with that is by upping the subdivisions as you go from section to section. So say you've got a verse where you're playing eighth notes on the hi-hat, but you can maybe move to the ride for a pre-chorus and actually bring it up to sixteenth notes. So, like this. So you might have also noticed at the end of that section, to like wash into what could be a chorus next, I stopped playing the tight sixteenths and started to just wash eighth notes. So I moved my stick to the edge of the ride and started to wash that in to give that effect. So playing less notes on the cymbal but harder and actually getting it to wash and give it some more life is a really effective thing to do to build into another section. So tip number two, pay attention to your subdivisions and try speed them up or slow them down to have more effect to move into a slower or faster section. Last point is fills. Don't be the guy that plays the standard fill. Maybe that is appropriate sometimes, but as a default go-to or fast sixteenths. 
So think about fills as a chance to get really creative and don't use that, as Benny Greb calls it, the drummer's lower back muscle where everyone just moves this way around the kit, like, ah, oh, it's the end of the fourth bar, I've got to move this way. Try and experiment with a fill, maybe just being a variety in groove, or maybe the last snare being a flam, or a flam on the snare tom, oh, the snare tom. So try and experiment with the fills being a chance to get really creative, and rather than like going around the toms every time, why don't you try using it to actually vary the groove? That could be your fill. So something like this. So you could try doing that, try just changing up the groove, add a few more notes or take it somewhere else and that could be a really good fill. You could also try just using a big flam or flamming between the snare and the floor tom to end a section and leaving a little gap rather than playing a fill. That could be really effective, like this. And one last thing to try is if you're on the hi-hats, try opening them up towards the end of the section. That's a great way to actually start to like make your playing sound more dynamic as you move from section to section. So, like this. It's subtle, but to the listener they can hear that the music's starting to get excited, your drums are starting to you know, open up and that sound is starting to get bigger and bigger. Same applies for the ride cymbal, like I showed you earlier, if you're just playing here. Try playing on the edge more and open that up. So there's three tips to guide you in writing drums for your original music. I can't tell you what the perfect drum part is, but you've got to study drums, you've got to study grooves, you've got to see what works in music and why. And when it comes to, you know, increasing the dynamics or bringing them back down, pay attention to what the music's doing. Lock into the bass, listen to the riffs, leave space for the vocals. If you've got a really strong vocal part in a verse, uh, you know, maybe the appropriate groove is just... Instead of... Because, I mean, yeah, fun, but like, the vocals are not gonna sit in the mix over that properly at all. So, you know, use your musicality, use your common sense, but there's three tips that hopefully will help you write better parts for your tunes. Thanks for your question. Anything else? Chuck them in the comments down below. I'll uh, pick my favourite ones and make the next video. See you soon.